This rainforest has evolved from whatever plant species made it to the isolated continent first. Similarly, the animals there have radiated to fill all the available niches have evolved from relatively few ancestors, as reaching this virgin continent was so difficult. The Antarctic Forest or Antarctic Rainforest is a large tropical rainforest in the north of the continent of Antarctica in 100 million AD. By this era, Antarctica has drifted far north enough for it to lie partially in the tropics, and the Antarctic Forest is a lush place flourishing with unique plant and animal life, particularly those that have mastered flight such as birds and insects. The Antarctic Plate has been moving northwards for 100 million years, gradually creeping towards the southern edge of Asia. This plate has carried the continent out of the polar zone, through the southern temperate zone and across the southern desert belt. The forest covers almost the entirety of Antarctica's northern region, including several mountainous areas. The south of the continent still lies in colder climes, so the forest has not spread far south. The Antarctic forest lies in the tropics, not too far south of the equator, and is therefore very warm, especially given 100 million AD's generally higher global temperatures, Trade winds also bring year-round warm rains, giving a further boost to plant life. The first vertebrate settlers were birds, their powers of flight enabling them to cross the oceans to reach the isolated continent, and they brought with them yet more seeds and insects. As Antarctica is an island continent, separated from the rest of the world by hundreds of miles of sea, all life in the Antarctic forest has flown or been blown there. While the continent lays in the polar regions, its plant life consisted mainly of mosses, lichens, and alga. However, as it drifted north, seeds and spores of true plants were blown west from South America, and those seeds which survived established themselves in Antarctica and radiated into several different species, eventually giving rise to the Antarctic forest itself. More plants were brought over with successive animal migrations, and the Antarctic forest is home to a great variety of plant life including the Spitfire tree a keystone species on which several animals rely. The first foreign animals to arrive on the continent were spiders and insects which were lightweight enough to be carried there on the winds they flourished among the developing plant life and eventually evolved into larger forms due to high global oxygen levels. Insects are the dominant predators of the Antarctic forest with giant wasps chasing down other animals and predatory beetles ambushing them. Birds specifically tubnose seabirds like petrels shearwaters fulmars and albatrossashad inhabited the coasts of Antarctica even when it was covered in ice and with the development of the forest they evolved into myriad forms the most common birds are the flutterbirds which come in a variety of shapes and forms but there are other bird families including ones which have become ground dwellers the forest is also home to other non tubnose birds which arrived from across the seas. The Spitfire tree is a species of flowering tree native to the Antarctic forest of 100 million at it as a keystone species of the forest's ecosystem. The male and female flowers of the Spitfire tree produce different chemicals which become volatile when mixed together the Spitfire bird drinks these chemicals and mixes them in its crop using them as a powerful chemical weapon against predators such as falconflies Spitfire birds also help to pollinate the trees as they pick up and drop seeds when they dip their beaks into the flowers. The Spitfire bird's reliance on the trees is exploited by Spitfire beetles which are able to disguise themselves as Spitfire blossoms and then kill the birds when they come in to feed fall Spitfire birds also stay around Spitfire trees in order to mimic true Spitfire birds and so warn off predators. With a squawk and a flurry of feathers to two tumble through the branches and undergrowth and crash to the ground there the falconfly rips the victim to pieces with its powerful jaws. The falconfly is a species of giant predatory wasp native to the Antarctic forest of 100 million AD. Greater than it is the top predator of the forest and preys on birds including flutterbirds. The falconfly is the size of a human-era bird of prey such as a kestreland has a very powerful set of jaws its forelimbs have small hooks which allow it to grab prey whilst its hind limbs have very sharp plants like tips which can be used to impale or stab prey like other wasps it also has a venomous sting. Falconflies are aerial predators which seize their prey with their hooked legs and either use their hind legs like a lance or a harpoon to stab deep into the prey's internal organs or give the prey a jab with their sting the falconfly will tackle the prey down onto the forest floor and tear it to pieces using its jaws. 
Falcon flies give birth to three to four maggots which are each laid in a separate burrow to prevent them from cannibalizing one another a mother falconfly will take care of her maggots returning to her burrows to feed her young with lumps of flesh from butchered prey she remembers where each burrow is by memorizing familiar landmarks. Falconflies prey on flying birds such as flutterbirds most notably the defenseless roachcutter not all flutterbirds are so defenseless however, the spitfire bird is capable of spitting hot acid at attackers driving them off another species of flutterbird the false spitfire birdies itself harmless but it mimics the appearance of the true spitfire bird to warn off predators including falconflies even so the falconfly can overpower the spitfire bird if the bird has run out of ammo and is attempting to restock sometimes stealing from spitfire beetles. Motionless the Spitfire beetles wait mimicking the flowers of the Spitfire tree as it moves in the beetles leap into action seizing the bird before it can bring its defenses into play grasshopper like hind legs propel the attack and strong jaws and grappling hooked claws on the forelegs crunch into the bird's body. The Spitfire beetle is a species of social predatory beetle native to the Antarctic forest of 100 million AD notable for their ability to closely mimic the appearance of a Spitfire tree blossom in order to ambush prey. Spitfire beetles resemble a typical beetle of the human era. K time equals 0.2 s, greater than and, individually, are notable only for their bright red and yellow coloration. Their hind legs are similar to those of grasshoppers, allowing them to propel themselves forwards, and their forelegs have grappling hook-like claws. Several parts of their body help them to resemble Spitfire blossoms, their coloration, their stamen-like antennae, their petal-like elytra, and their heads and thoraxes, which when put together resemble the center of a flower. Spitfire beetles spend most of their lives in sibling groups of four. They are carnivorous ambush predators, and, to hunt, they mimic the appearance of a Spitfire tree blossom. The four beetles position themselves on a Spitfire trunk, standing head to head in a cross formation, then spread their wings, revealing the highly camouflaged parts of their bodies. The beetles will wait until a Spitfire bird approaches the flower, then leap at it using their grasshopper-like legs, seizing it and killing it with their strong jaws and hooked claws. All four beetles will then share the carcass of the bird. When the Spitfire tree's flowering season ends and Spitfire birds no longer approach the trees, the beetle colonies disperse, moving off in search of mates. Once mated, the male beetle dies and the pregnant female lays clutches of four eggs beneath the bark of Spitfire trees. The female beetle also dies soon afterwards, and the eggs hatch the following spring, when the Spitfire tree's flowering season has begun again. The Spitfire beetle is one of a large community of organisms which relies on the Spitfire tree, as noted above. Not only is it specifically adapted to hunt Spitfire birds by imitating the flower of the tree, it also lays its eggs beneath its bark. Because Spitfire birds get their acidic chemicals from the Spitfire tree flowers, the beetles don't have to worry about getting sprayed, since a Spitfire bird will only move in to feed from a flower when its store of chemicals is depleted. On a few occasions the beetles get robbed of their prey by falconflies. The roachcutter uses its keen eyesight to spot prey. Its wings are short and broad, giving it great maneuverability in the dense forest. The roa. Shkatur is a species of flutterbird native to the Antarctic forest of 100 million at it as a specialized insect hunter and as the swiftest of the flutterbirds. The roachkutter is a small flutterbird about the size of a sparrow and can be distinguished from other flutterbirds by its purple feathers which turn to cream on its head and iridescent blue on its wingtips and by its eyes which are mounted on turrets its beak is also very strong and capable of crushing hard exoskeletons. Its short wings have a high aspect ratio, they are short and broad, which makes them perfect for making tight turns in mid-air and their tips are splayed out like fingers allowing them to manipulate the passage of air increasing the roachcutter's maneuverability Thusit is able to both slowly navigate tight space and fly at very high speeds. The roachcutter is a specialized predator of insects scanning tree trunks for small insects using its turreted eyes however it is itself hunted by an insect. The falconfly a giant wasp roachcutters have no defense against falcon flies which have hooked foreleg sharpoon like hind legs powerful jaws and venomous stings.
It dips its head repeatedly into the flower from which it appears to be feeding suddenly there may be a hum and flutter as the other residents of the forest canopy flee an approaching predator but rather than darting away to safety this bird faces the danger as the predator draws near the spitfire bird will lower its head then at the last possible moment it sprays a hot corrosive acid from its nostrils. The Spitfire bird is a species of flutterbird native to the Antarctic forest of 100 million AD using chemicals gathered from the Spitfire tree it is capable of shooting a nasty acid like chemical substance at potential predators they may appear cute but when they attack you will be running. Spitfire birds are perhaps the most dangerous birds in the Antarctic jungle due to their secret weapon they also have bright colors to warn predators of said secret weapon something that another flutterbird exploits, the false Spitfire bird. K time equals 0.4 s greater than Spitfire birds behave rather like hummingbirds, aside from feeding on flowers they can also hover. The falcon fly is one of its predators, though when hit by the bird's chemicals they'll give them a wide berth, but if the Spitfire bird has run out of chemicals then the falcon fly can subdue it. The bird's main predator though is the Spitfire beetle, who exploit the birds need to replenish their chemicals by mimicking the flowers, four beetles will clump together, pose as a flower and when a bird approaches they pounce and kill it. The false Spitfire bird is a species of flutterbird native to the Antarctic forest of 100 million AD. It is a docile cousin of the Spitfire bird, and mimics its appearance as a form of defense against predators. Due to the Spitfire bird's notoriety for shooting burning chemicals at predators, falconflies that had run ins will avoid preying on this species as well. It is unknown if the false Spitfire bird has the same dietary preferences or is hunted by Spitfire beetles.